This video is about how to make the most out of your walk in the West End of London. If you get off at Charing Cross Station, start in Trafalgar Square. People think that the West End is in the central part of London. It's partly true, but it's not located in the middle of London. You'll enjoy the West End area because there's so many things to see and do without spending any money, unless eating and buying souvenirs. Start your walk in Trafalgar Square and you'll see the National Gallery and the National Portrait Gallery, all free of charge. The National and National Portrait Gallery contains thousands of paintings from all around Europe. Paintings from bathers in France, a woman standing at a virginal, sunflowers from Van Gogh. You're sure to find something that interests your creative flair. Trafalgar Square not only is an icon but celebrates the victory of the Battle of Trafalgar. The British naval won against the Napoleonic War between France and Spain in 1805. The tall Nelson's column standing in the middle commemorates Admiral Horatio Nelson, who brought excellent strategic plans within the British Navy, later died in the Battle of Trafalgar, hence the name Trafalgar Square. In the modern day, Trafalgar Square is a great social place to sit, eat and socialise with friends and family. Four giant lions stand at around 10 feet tall around the square. Lions have always been the national symbol for British celebrations, whether it be sports, victories during wars, and it symbolises power and strength in the economy and other social statuses. The many mermaid fountains found in the square is to commemorate Admiral Jellico and Beatty, two British Navy admirals in the Battle of Jutland, 1916. The UK has had many turmoil and downturns going back to the 11th century and it has made our present country stronger and better economically, socially and politically. To get to the West End, there are many options. The buses will be crowded, long but cheaper, whereas the tube will be shorter, more expensive as well as crowded. Depending on where you are, take the numbers 13, 15, 23, 139 and 153, which all stop at Trafalgar Square and Aldwych, both a short walk from the market building in Covent Garden. The number 24 stops at Leicester Square and Covent Garden is signposted from there. As you arrive in Covent Garden, you'll notice a large square. In that large square, there'll be street entertainers and usually a large crowd watching. The street entertainers can be cheesy, but children love them. Along with street entertainers, you will see various live statues, toss a coin and they'll move. Walk towards the Covent Garden Piazza and you'll see various luxury beauty and designer fashion stores ranging from Mulberry, Tom Ford, Lulu Guinness, as well as independent fashion and beauty stores. Other stores to look out for include the Apple Store, which is always crowded with people browsing and buying, and many vintage and quirky toy stores such as Benjamin Pollock's Toy Store, the Tintin Shop, Moomin Shop and many more. There are also many bars, cafes, restaurants and pubs to choose from, ranging from £10 to £15 a meal. The three food outlets include the White Lion Pub, situated next to Covent Garden for fish and chips and Sunday roast. The Crusting Pipe, a wine bar and restaurant, is also great for afternoon tea. Then there's Sushi Samba, a popular chic restaurant for high-end dining among the Brits. Pubs, restaurants and bars in and around London can be crowded, even smaller outlets which look intimate. However, many of the stores around here still keep its 19th century Victorian style architecture. Attractions in Covent Garden include the London Transport Museum, a museum of the history of London's transportation going back to the 17th century. There are many activities for children of all ages and they can jump on board some of the buses. Spend one hour here if you wish and entry tickets for adults are £18 on the door and £16.50 online. Children under the ages of 17 years old are free of charge. Other attractions include the Royal Opera House, St Paul's Church, a hidden gem open in the 17th century, the crowded Apple Market and Jubilee Market. Apple Market has several stores selling handmade products. Situated in the 19th century, Covent Garden Piazza, the Apple Market sell handmade products from shiny silverware, fashion accessories, house ornaments and many more. Prices range from £10 upwards.
Once you cover Covent Garden, head over to Neal Street, a small cobbled street next to Marks and Spencers. Head over to Monmouth Street. It's hard to miss a small alleyway which will lead you to Neal's Yard, a beautiful and colourful dead end containing independent shops and restaurants. Very intimate and great to take photos for five minutes. Spend no more than two hours in Covent Garden and five minutes in Neal's Yard. After Covent Garden, head over to Shaftesbury Avenue, the theatre district in the West End. The th street here always has sparkling billboards at the top of the theatre. It gets bright and colourful at night as the lights reflect on the vehicles. The first theatre you'll see is in Charing Cross Road and you'll see Harry Potter, The Cursed Child, Les Miserables, the Thriller, Michael Jackson Tribute and many small international theatres along the way. Chinatown is adjacent to Shaftesbury Avenue, so make sure to take photos of the red lantern strewn at the top of the buildings. Although Chinatown isn't as big as many Chinatowns from around the world, there are many Asian restaurants and supermarkets to choose from. Admire the many red Chinese lanterns strewn above the street and the colourful Chinatown gate. Chinatown can be remarkably busy day and night. Spend one hour here for lunch or dinner before a theatre show. Otherwise, relax here for as long as you please. After Chinatown, head over to Piccadilly Circus, adjacent to Shaftesbury Avenue. Piccadilly Circus is nothing more than just a giant billboard, a memorial and a place to hang out. The only reason why it's so popular is because of its location, the West End. People usually spend time there after they've had a hard time shopping in Regent Street, which is linked to Piccadilly Circus. Other than that, people go there before and after a theatre show, a place to have takeaway lunches and watch and listen to noisy buskers singing by the Shaftesbury Memorial. It's the many streets linking to Piccadilly Circus that should be given special attention to. After, head over to Leicester Square. Like Covent Garden, Leicester Square is another place to socialise and eat. As most know, Leicester Square is the home of film premieres. Leicester Square is, can be busy as Covent Garden, but the space is larger and you'd have more space to walk around in. 
The first thing you'll notice is the Hippodrome Casino if you're coming from Leicester Square Station. If you're coming from Piccadilly Circus, you'll see the terribly busy m and m store as well as street performers and buskers. If you're the gambling kind, the Hippodrome Casino is a great place to hang out. Like Covent Garden, you'll also see street performers around here and if you plan to watch a theatre show, there are many booths around Leicester Square and Piccadilly Circus. The big TKTS ticket booths usually sell 50% off tickets for shows on that day up to a week in advance. However, still shop around for better deals. Make sure you buy your tickets on the day. The queues are usually long in these ticket booths, but the prices are worth it. Hang around in the square. You'll be surrounded by big giant oak trees, a tall Shakespeare memorial statue and small fountains surrounding the statue. Children usually play in summer when the fountain shoots up. Check the Indigo restaurant on the ninth floor for a view of the London Eye and Canary Wharf. Since Leicester Square is the home of film premieres, they've installed several Hollywood character statues such as Paddington Bear and Mr Bean. Spend no more than one hour there. Head towards Piccadilly Street. Along this street, like Regent Street and Shaftesbury Avenue, it can be also busy. If you're a sportswear lover, check out Lily White Sportswear Store. If you're a book lover, check out Hatchard's Bookstore and the flagship Waterstones Bookstores selling more than 20,000 books. Hatcher's black wooden storefront still has the 19th century architecture with two Union Jack flags above the shop. A gigantic crest stuck to the wall can be seen at the top of the shop. This means the shop is an official supply of goods and services to the Queen, by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen booksellers. Although it's the one place the Queen buys her products, it's just an ordinary shop for people to browse and buy. Nestled behind the small intimate Piccadilly market opposite the Royal Academy of Arts is St. James's Piccadilly Anglican Church, dating back to the 17th century. Designed by Christopher Wren before the dark wooden medieval staircase, look up to a high ceiling and you'll see several paintings of priests and pastors since the 17th century. Admire the Gothic window and original brickwork at the top of the stairs. As you head into the altar, Look up to the white arch ceiling adorned with intricate gold decor. This church is a great place to get away from the busy city life and spend around 30 minutes here. If you have time, visit the Royal Academy of Arts free of charge, situated opposite St. James's Church. The Royal Academy of Arts consists of exhibitions, education and debate between modern artists and architects since 18th century. Walk up there you will see Fortnum and Masons, a luxurious traditional British confectionery store ranging from British tea, chocolates, biscuits and many more. Fortnum and Masons has a colourful storefront ranging from the giant teapot pouring tea into a giant teacup. As you enter the 19th century building, you'll feel the intimate darkness of the store. As you step inside the store, you'll feel the traditional 19th century upper class Britain. Classy, intimate and luxurious at the same time. You can also book an afternoon tea here. Walk further up and you'll notice the Ritz Hotel. As many know, the famous Ritz Hotel serve first class fine dining in the heart of London.
To be honest, people will just walk through the archway of the hotel, nothing more. You wouldn't be able to see people eating by the window either as it's curtained up to make it as private as possible. Next to the Ritz Hotel is the Green Park, one of eight Royal Parks of London. The Green Park is not as beautiful as the other eight Royal Parks, but take some time to enjoy nature. The 19th century buildings around it, the flowers, the many large oak and ash trees, as well as the memorials. People hardly pay attention to the memorials here, but children often like to play by them. Beyond the Green Park, you'll notice a large black iron gate known as the Canada Gate. If you go past the gate, you'll end up in Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace is self-explanatory, no need for introduction. As for the deck chairs you saw earlier, you'd have to pay per hour. People like to take photos in front of the palace and hang around by the Victoria Memorial statue in front. If you want to see the changing of the guards, you will have to come here first thing in the morning. Get there by 10am for the 11am ceremony. It does get busy and if you go anywhere else, you'll miss your spot. The best view is the left hand side of the Iron Gate if you're coming from Victoria Station. Although the view of the changing of the guards is quite far away, it's a ceremony not to be missed. Otherwise, people tend to take photos of the guards standing in front of the palace. It's quite far away, but it's worth it in the end. The changing of the guards can be taken for granted from the Brits, but it's a British iconic ceremony for tourists not to miss, especially if it's your first time. Next, Take some time enjoying the second Royal Parks of London, St. James's Park. Unlike the Green Park, St. James's Park has more activities for everyone. If you want to make the most of St. James's Park, walk down the small steps towards St. James's Lake. You'll see many ducks, swans and birds as well as wild greenery sprouting out of the water. While you're walking on the path, you'll notice several plaques which says Princess Diana Memorial Walk. This means the path is a memory to Princess Diana of Wales. Turn right, you'll notice several bushes opposite a white water fountain, not usually used, and several wildlife. Between the bushes, you'll see a great view of great 18th century buildings with a view of the London Eye and the lake. 
go back to the path where you came from and walk up, you'll notice beautiful flowers on your left. Take photos of those if you wish. As you walk up, you'll notice a blue bridge over St. James's Lake. Take some time to take photos of the view of Buckingham Palace and the London Eye. This blue bridge is a great area to procrastinate and enjoy nature. Next to the blue bridge, you'll come across people crowding a large tree. Here, you'll see several green parakeets who are tamed enough to sit on your hand if you give them some food. Walk further up, you'll see a path going up to Duck Island. Here you'll see white pelicans sitting on the rocks. They are quite far away and it's hard to take a good picture, but at 2.30pm it will be feeding time and you'll be able to get up close and personal with them. As you go around the park, you'll see Horse Guard Parade. Here you'll be able to see Horse Guard Cavalry changing of the guards. There is a lot of waiting around. Further up, you'll see Churchill War Museum, a paid museum and the children's playground. Go through Horse Guard Parade Archway, you will see two horse guards standing. Get up close and personal with the horses. You can pet them gently but be careful they are not to be messed with. Turn left and you'll end up in Trafalgar Square again and the Free National Gallery. Have lunch or dinner there while enjoying the Tra Trafalgar Square fountains and the Nelson Column. There is a Tesco supermarket if you wish to get a takeaway. If you have time, visit the South Bank area and you'll see Big Ben, Westminster Cathedral, the view of the River Thames and many more.